Amen. Thank you, team. Jesus saves. Take your Bible, go to Ephesians chapter 6 as we begin this morning in this last message on spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6, we begin reading in verse number 10 and read through verse number 20. So you found your copy of Scripture this morning. Uh, I'm going to ask you to help me twice during this sermon so uh, you'll practice what I preach, okay? So that'll be good. I ought to practice what I preach. I try to, but I'm going to ask you to practice what I preach this morning. And so uh, we'll look together in Ephesians 6, beginning in verse number 10 and reading through verse number 20. You've got your copy of Scripture, and we find Paul writing to the church at Ephesus, and he begins, finally, hmm, we know he was a Baptist, Finally, and he didn't mean it, uh, in conclusion, I'm almost done, but really he wasn't. He had more to say, but he comes to the end of this great, great, great letter to this church at Ephesus. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against rulers and against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you'll be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in proclaiming it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Spiritual warfare. We're looking together at this conflict, this struggle, this wrestling. It's not man to man, not person to person. But as the text says, we are wrestling, struggling with rulers and powers and forces of darkness, spiritual forces of wickedness that are in heavenly places. Uh, Tony Dungy, who for many years was a football coach in the National Football League, now a commentator that you'll see on CBS from time to time. You may see him today. Uh, coach Dungy said it correctly when he said these words not long ago. Today, we are a divided country, and Satan is laughing at us because that is exactly what he wants. Dysfunction, mistrust, and hatred help his kingdom flourish. We have to realize we're not fighting against other people. We're fighting against Satan and his kingdom of spiritual darkness. Uh, not bad for a football coach. CBS commentator. He is a Baptist. He's one of us. Member to Idlewild Baptist Church in Tampa, Florida, where my good friend Ken Whitten is his under-shepherd. Coach Dungy uh, speaks into the lives of men often. And this was one of those nuggets that uh, social media grabbed about the warfare that we are in. I don't think anybody, you'd have to be hiding under a rock not to know that we've got a conflict going on. So there's struggle on every side, and we must learn 
how to fight the fight, how to wrestle. That's the word in verse number 12 of King James, is that we wrestle not. It's the only time the word wrestle is used in all of the New Testament is this word right here uh, in the New American Standard uh, given struggle or wrestle, but our struggle, our wrestling, it's not, it's not against flesh and blood. It's not I can whip you and you can whip me. But our wrestling is against rulers, power, world forces that are uh, of darkness and their spiritual forces verse number 12 says of wickedness that are in high and heavenly places it's a spiritual fight and you've got to be ready to fight the fight you can't fight this fight on your own verse 11 13 14 tell us what we've got to do and that is that we must stand firm Stand firm. A third time. This is the theme of the warfare passage. Notice in verse 11, put on the full armor of God so that you'll be able to what? One word. Stop. Stand firm. Verse 13, therefore taking up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and heaven and everything too. Stand firm. And then again in verse 14, he just begins the sentence with the same words. Stop. Stand firm. And then he gives us the six pieces of the gospel armor. We are to stand, stand, but not just that. We are to stand firm. Uh, This is a military formation for combat. That is this word. It's as if you're lined up ready in combat formation for the war coming at you against you. Stand firm. And you've got to be strong, but you're not strong in your own self. Verse 10 gives us the word strength or strong in three different ways. Three different Greek words are used in verse number 10. Notice it. Finally, be dunamis. That's our word dynamo or dynamite. Be dynamic in the Lord and in the karyos, the strength of his ekphos, of his might. Be strong. Have strength, have might. Three different words all combined together to show us that we must be strong, not in our own self. Hmm. That's our problem. We get to fighting in the flesh, and we say, well, I can whip that crap. Well, all you've done is won a battle. Friend, we're in a war, and we're here to win it. And to do it, we must stand firm. This morning, I want to show you two things, and I want you to help me practice these two things as you walk out of here this morning. And I'm going to give an invitation at the end. I'm going to ask some whole family, mama, daddy, children, I'm going to ask you to come and join our church today. Uh, you, You need a church. We're going to talk about that today. Somebody's in this room. You've never given your heart and life to Christ. You need to be saved. There are people online that need to join the church. You can do that uh, by simply texting in, uh, getting online, sending a message. Our team will be back to you. Uh, You're listening television, radio. You get in contact with us. We're we're glad to help you to understand how to know the Lord, uh, how to be a part. Uh, of our family right here at this place called Olive. We'll give that invitation. But before we get there, I want you to practice with me two things. Number one, I want you to learn, first of all, to stand firm, stand firm in full armor. Stand firm in full armor. He, He outlines in verse 14, stand firm, therefore, and then he tells us the six pieces of the Roman soldier's armor that we must put on and he spiritualizes these six pieces of the gospel armor and I want you to memorize them I want you to say them I want you to put them on every morning this week Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday every day this week when you get up the first thing I want you to do is put on your armor I want you to speak it I want you to say it you got friends in your family and uh, all together I want you to uh, Challenge your family. Put on your armor. Let's say the armor. We're going to put the armor on together. Let's look at these six pieces. Uh, It begins with the belt of truth. Put on the belt of truth. Ephesians 1 and verse 13 tells us, In him you also, after listening to the message of what? The message of truth. The gospel of your salvation. Having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. Listen to me. The truth 
is the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the truth. Now the devil's going to try to trick you. He's going to tell you you're not saved. You're not good enough to be saved. You really never believed. Uh, you were just baptized. You really didn't get it. He's going to tell you, friend, you run to the gospel, run to the truth, and strap on the belt of truth and call him a liar to his face. And claim your salvation by grace through faith in Christ. Put on the belt of truth. Secondly, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now the belt was the first piece because he had it in his midsection and it tied everything together. It would tie the breastplate down. Uh, it, it kept the sword uh, buckled and, and there were a lot of things that went with the belt. That's the reason it's first. Then the breastplate is the breastplate of righteousness covering uh, those uh, organs that are so vital to our life. Romans 1, 16 and 17 speak to that. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes. Did you first also the Greek? For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. This is written, the righteous man shall live by faith. You put on the breastplate of righteousness. Now the devil will come against you. He say, you're not righteous. You know, you, you, you thought that. You, you said those bad words. You took the Lord's name in vain. You you thought evil about a friend. You went to sleep in church. You didn't pay attention. He'll tell you you're not righteous. Let me tell you, friend, you you call him the liar because you have imputed righteousness. God took it from Jesus' account and put it into your account. And when he put it in your account, you are as righteous as Jesus is righteous. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Number three, put on the shoes of peace. The shoes of peace. Isaiah 52, verse number 7. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who bring good news, who announce peace and bring good news of happiness and announces salvation and says to Zion, what's he say? Your God reigns. Hallelujah. You bring the gospel of peace. Let me tell you, when you get right with God, you get saved. You have peace with God and you have the peace of God in your life. You're at peace with him and his peace descends on you he calls it the gospel shoes of peace that's how you stand firm you ever seen a nervous speaker you ever go to something and you think man that guy's wearing me out because he's nervous I'm, I'm not sure there's two things happen. If you're, if you're ever called on to speak in public, there are two things you've got to be careful. Number one, you've got to be careful with your hands. You've got to do something with them. I tell young preachers all the time, first time you preach, you ought to preach with a pair of pants with no pockets. Don't ever do this right here. Don't put your hands in your pockets. Number one, you're going to tear your pants off, all right? Because you, <laughs> you get your hands out of your pockets. That makes you look nervous, especially when you put them both in there. All right. Every now and then it can be a casual deal. But, but the other thing is your feet. If you're going to speak in public, your feet's what make you look nervous. If you're not going anywhere, stand still. Huh. If you want to make a point, you step over, okay, go somewhere. But you know, when you're just kind of, well, I... You ever hear it said, the quarterback, he drops back, and he's looking around, and he's got nervous what? He getting nervous feet. He's about to get killed. What are you about to happen? All right? He's dancing around back there, going nowhere. Well, let me tell you, when, when the gospel comes in your life, you have the shoes of peace. You have peace with God. You have the peace of God, and you're able to stand firm knowing that the peaceful one, the shalom of God, rests on you. When you find yourself right in the center of his will, even when the storms howl against you, stand in peace. Belt of truth, breastplate of right, shoes of peace. Those are the three that are up and down. All right. Then you've got three that come across. 
All right. The next one, we talked about it the whole time last Sunday. It was a whole sermon. It was on the shield of what? The shield of faith. And we find that as the fourth piece. It's not that little round shield, but again, it's that larger shield, two and a half feet wide, four feet tall. It's almost like a door that you're standing behind, and you can put those together when the soldiers would come, and they would put shield by shield by shield by shield by shield, and I make a wall. That's why you need to be a part of a church. You come alongside your other brothers and sisters, and there you're linked together because we can do more together when you ever do separate. And God makes us one together. That's why you ought to join this church. That's why some of you ought to come join it today. You ought to be a part. You say, I don't like all those people in there. Well, some of them don't like you. So I don't agree with all of them. Well, some of them don't agree with you. So they do things different than I do. They wear clothes different than I do. They got their hair different than I do. I don't, let me tell you, friend, God doesn't look on the outside. God looks on the inside. My mother told me one time, she said, I don't like the way our preacher dresses. He don't ever wear a tie. I said, well, Mama, it don't make no difference. I said, what's that? I said, God doesn't look on the outside. She said, I ain't worried about God. I know what he looks on. I'm talking about my eyes. <laughs> well, you need to look your eyes like God's eyes. Amen. We come together. You're not all the same, but you're all in the same army. God's drawn us together. It's the shield of faith. 1 Peter 5, verse number 9 says, But resist him. Resist the old wicked one. Firm in your what? Faith. Knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. You resist him by faith. Number five, you put on the helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. One of the most important pieces, if not the most important piece, is the helmet because it covers the head. And if you ever get a wound to the head, you're always out of commission. You need to cover. That's why the Word of God says in Isaiah 59, verse number 17, He put on righteousness like a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on His head. And He put on garments of vengeance for clothing, wrapped Himself with zeal as a mantle. He, he put on that helmet of salvation. It's that crowning piece that protects what you think. I've been telling our staff for weeks now, you, you cannot believe everything you think. You can't do it. You see, some of you, you'll pick up your phone. You'll send a friend a text. And the only reason you send it is because you want them to send you one back. You're sucking up. Yeah, you did a good job, da 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 and it's a good thing. But if you don't get a response, then you begin to think, they really don't like me. You can't believe everything you think. Number one, they may not have paid their phone bill. <laughs> they might not have their phone turned on. They may not look at text messages but once a day. And they may not like you. <laughs> but hear me. You can't believe everything you think. I've had people walk in this room. I preach. And, and they come up to me and say, Pastor, did somebody tell you what happened to me this week? I said, well, number one, I don't know your name. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, and they, they get under conviction and they think, well, somebody told the preacher so he'd talk about me. Well, oh, man, you can't believe everything you think. That may be God's way of dealing with you. But you see, you got to get your mind right. That's why you need God's protection over what you think. You don't need to believe everything you think. You need to believe everything God says. Put on the helmet of salvation. And number six, pick up the sword of the Spirit. Now, now listen to me very carefully. The sword of the Spirit, which is the what? The Word of God. There are two words in the Word for the word word. There are two words in this Word for the word word. One of them is logos. That is the, the written Word. That is not this Word. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That's not Logos. It's not written. It is the rhema. And that is the spoken Word of God. Now listen to me very carefully. Listen. You will not have victory until you take the written Logos and verbalize it as a rhema. No, sir, you won't. Some of you know it in your head, but you've not found courage enough to speak it out in public. 
And when you know what the Word of God says at the right, you shouldn't always say everything you know. Hmm. That just makes you a smart aleck. But when the Spirit of God touches your soul and you know it's time to speak, then you give a rhema, which is based on the Logos, and God gives victory in that moment. Sometimes He'll give victory by getting you to shut your mouth. Other times He wants you to open up. But always have the sword of the Spirit. Always have the Logos so God can give a rhema when it's just right that you speak a word into somebody's soul. So six pieces of the gospel armor. All right, I want you to practice. Everybody stand to your feet. Everybody rise if you're physically able. Okay, we're going to put on the six pieces of gospel armor. This is what I want you to do. I want you to put them on every morning this week. Matter of fact, this afternoon after you take a nap. I want you to put them on this afternoon, okay? It'll be good for you. All right, let's, let's do it. Here we go. Let's put them on. I'm going to get you started, and then you shout them out. Here we go. All right, we're going to put on the belt of truth. The. 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 the Word. All right, a little quicker. Here we go. Real fast. Here we go. Here we go. You're a lot quicker than that first crowd. There's. Now, every day when you get up this week, every morning, I want you to put that on. Now, when you go to the mirror, Say, Lord, God, cover this with something. <laughs> Amen. Uh, don't put that helmet on first. You're going to want to, but don't do that. And so you put them on. And then when you walk out that day, you stand in God's truth. You stand in His righteousness. You walk in His peace. You live by faith. You guard your mind with salvation and you quote the word of God with a rhema and speak it into the world. Amen. 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 You do it every time. Thank you. You be seated. Good, good. Who wants to just stand up and say them? It's in a 12th grade over here. If I got a senior student, stand up and give them to me. If I got an 11th grade student. How about a sophomore? Ninth grader. 10th grader, 8th grader, I got a 1st grader, <laughs> I'm doing this for a reason, I'm about to preach to you right here in a minute, I got one person in the youth group that'll stand up and do it, let's go, Ben, go man, Amen. See you, Daddy. After church, he give you twenty dollars. <laughs> All right, you, you you got to stand firm in the full armor. But now, secondly, you must stand firm in persistent prayer. In persistent prayer. Notice what he says in verse number eighteen. After you put on the gospel armor. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. With this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints and pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. He says persist in prayer. Three things he says to pray. Number one, pray in the Spirit. Matter of fact, friend, the only way you can pray is in the Spirit. You can't pray in the flesh. You got to pray in the Spirit. If you're going to pray in the Spirit, you got to be full of the Spirit. If you're going to be full of the Spirit, you got to be empty of yourself. Got to die to yourself, filled with the Spirit of the living God. Ephesians 5, 18, if you look back one chapter, it says, Be ye filled. Paruo is the word. Plethora is our word. They're filled to the fullness, to the top 
running over. We are to be filled with the Spirit of God, and the only way to pray in the Spirit is to be filled with the Spirit, and self is dead, the Spirit is alive, and you pray that way. I, I, I go over here in the green room. The last thing I do every time before I come out here, I stand up, and I do three things. I've shared this many, 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 many times. Raise my hands, praise the Lord. Secondly, I put my hands out right like this. I say, Lord, crucify me, dead to myself. I die to me, dead to Ted. That's my phrase. And then I say, oh, blessed Holy Spirit of God, fill me, flood me. They don't need to hear from me. They need to hear from you. God, send it like a river through me. When these folks are singing their last song, I'm usually sitting right here in this chair. And I'm praying one thing. You might see my lips moving from time to time. I'm not always singing along. Sometimes I am, but I'm always praying this. It was Spurgeon's prayer in his preaching chair, and I learned it from history. He prayed this prayer over and over and over Lord, I believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. God ministered the Spirit through me. I can't speak a word to these folks. I, I can't help anybody. I might say a, a, a word, but you can speak truth and life into a soul. And God, you've chosen to use a human instrument. I pray, God, you'd not only sing through us, but you'd pray through us, that you'd speak through us, preach through us this day that I might pray in the Spirit. And friend, you ought to pray in the Spirit. The only way to pray in the Spirit is to be full of the Spirit. The only way to be full of the Spirit is to be empty of yourself so that the power of Almighty God will flow like a mighty river through your life. Number one, pray in the Spirit. Secondly, he said, pray for all the saints. Notice what he said right there in verse number 18, on the alert with all perseverance, petition for all the saints. You ought to pray for all the saints of God. Pray for all the saints. You have a prayer list? I hope you do. Well, I prayed and asked God's blessing on the saints. Now, this morning, I want you specifically to think about praying with me for college students, high school students, and middle school students. Pray for all the saints. Sean talked about six generations. We need to pray for all generations. But this morning, I, I want to zero in asking you to pray for college students, high school students, middle school students. God is at work in our church in those three groups. He's at work in a lot of places, but I'm seeing that. I'm, I'm seeing it bubble up. Of these 10 young men that I meet with every Sunday night or two, about every two to three weeks we meet together, but I'm asking any question they want to. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray 5G for them, 5G. You see all those commercials on television about 5G? You get your phone out. You got 5G? I don't know what I got. I got a phone. I just got a text message. Matter of fact, I just got a phone call. Hmm. I'll be back with you in a minute. What is 5G? I went online this week and I Googled two or three. What is 5G? They, they, I, I read all kind of stuff. They don't know. <laughs> At least they don't know well enough to explain it to me. I did find out G's for generation. I said, ah, now you're frying my fish. They said, well, 5G is kind of like you can't have 3G and you get a little more and sometimes it's four and a half. And I said, what are you talking about? They said, well, 5G, you see that girl, she comes pushing that big deal out there from AT&T, 5G, you know, you're all going to get it, and, and it's going to be faster than ever, and, uh, you know, the, it, it'll just be phenomenal. They, they just want you money, all right? <laughs> 5G, here's what I want you to pray. I want you to pray 5Gs. I want you to pray that this generation of college kids, high school kids, middle school students, I want you to pray that they'd know God. Number two, they'd know the gospel. Number three, they'd know grace. Number four, they'd experience goodness. And number five, that they would go. That they'll know the gospel. And know God. 
hey, you, you trust me on this. I'm telling you, there is a move among the young generation of the gospel and of God's power. They're hungry for something of substance. I'm thrilled that I'm seeing it bubble up even right here in this church. Pray they would know God and know the gospel. Pray that they would know grace, that they'd know graciousness. Do you, do you know, friends, if we stayed on our face in prayer, we'd be less likely to be in the face of our enemy. Hello. It's called grace. Goodness. Goodness. This generation loves it when you do good things. I'm talking about reaching out to the homeless, feeding the poor. Reaching to the down and out. Standing up for those that can't speak a word for themselves. The unborn. Pray that they would know goodness. But number five, pray they would geo. Go. I'm going to preach about this next Sunday. They'd, they'd, they'd go with the gospel. They'd go. And that this church, that Olive Baptist Church in its next generation would have the greatest generation of sending people out that we've ever known before. We see more preachers call, more missionaries sent, more teams going, that we would go, 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 go with the gospel. And I believe much of that will come out of this college, high school, middle school group. I want you to pray about that. Pray that they would go. Some don't have to, some just need to go across the street. Some of you just need to start a Bible study where you work. You need to go to the next office. Some just need to go to the next desk. Across the hallway to the next class. Pray in the Spirit. Pray for all the saints. 5G. And number last, you pray for the preachers. Pray for the preachers. Paul said right here, pray on my behalf that utterance be given to me the opening of my mouth that, that I may make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. He said, I'm in prison, uh, but I pray that in these chains I'll be able to. You ought to pray for preachers. You ought to pray for me. I pray a day doesn't go by. You don't pray for your pastor. You don't pray for the staff that works with you. I pray, I pray you, you'd pray for me every day of my life. Pray for other preachers that you know. Man, yesterday afternoon it came as such a shock to me. My friend Bernard Yates died and went to heaven. Pastor of the great Zion Hope Primitive Baptist Church here in the city. He preached right here with me just back at the end of school in May. He and Lonnie Wesley and myself did a baccalaureate. Virtual deal for high school seniors that were graduating. I knew he had a little muscle issue. Probably had no idea. Right now, this morning, Bernard Yates in glory. He's had the best church service he's ever been in in his life. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but his church, they've been virtual. Hadn't been back in there, even in their building yet. They had a guest guy online this morning lined up. You imagine coming to church. And all of a sudden, I mean, you're searching for a new pastor. Pastor's died. Now, for some of you, it'd be an answer to prayer, but for most of you, <laughs> you, you you'd, you'd be in shock. I'd be in shock. Yeah. All of a sudden, we're looking. And you ought, you ought to pray for the pastors. You ought to pray for that church. Amen. Pray that God would call out preachers. He called more than we've ever seen called out of our church. And that we would see them sent with the gospel. Praying that God would raise up men like Micaiah. The last chapter of 1 Kings chapter 22. The king of Israel and the king of Judah were at odds. There were 400 preachers, priests. that had come and said, this is what you ought to do. The king of Israel said, well... I want one more. They said, well, I know, a, I know a guy. He's a prophet named Micaiah. Call Micaiah. Ahab said, no, don't call him. He's never said anything good about me. They said, I want Micaiah. They brought Micaiah there. The priest came around Micaiah, and they, they said to him, look, we're all in agreement. This is what we ought to do, so just go along with us, wouldn't you? Just, just, just be in, 
unity with us. And Micaiah said, in 1 Kings twenty two fourteen, 14, it's underlined in my Bible. Micaiah said, as the Lord lives, what the Lord says to me, that I shall speak. When it's palatable and when it's not. When it's popular and when it's not. When you think that it'll scratch their ears and when you think it'll pull their ears off the side of their head. What God tells me to speak, that I'll speak. Pray that we'll have men of God like that. And they threw him in the dungeon. He went to jail for his obedience. He was not the first, he won't be the last. Oh, but when we get to glory, look up old Micaiah. He'll have a story to tell you. When he said what God told me, I spoke. Even when Ahab hated it, God loved it. And he raised up God's man. Here's what I want us to do this morning. I want us to practice. So here's, I'm asking you, I'm asking nobody to leave, nobody to move. I'm asking everybody to bow your head. Everybody to bow your head. If you are in this room or online, and you come with a burden, and you already know what the burden is, you don't have to think about it, you just said, Pastor, I came to church, and I have a burden, I really need to lay before the Lord, and need somebody to pray for me about it, I, I just would need to lay that before the Lord, if you come with that, I want to pray for you, if you're at home, just stand up next to your computer, if you're in your office, and if you're in this room right here, and you come with that burden, I want you just to rise to your feet right now. Nobody's coming to talk to you or whatever. You just got, you know that heavy burden. You already know what it is. You just stand. Just stand. If you know what it is. Maybe a child in the wilderness. Maybe a health issue. I want you to pray. All right, just stand. And while you're standing, I want to pray for you. Father, the people that are at home standing by their computers, I ask you in the mighty name of Jesus that God, you would be the power they need, be the dunamis that they need, be the dynamic in their life. Now, Lord, for those in this room, there are many. Lord, I don't know all these needs, but I know Bill's need. And I pray in Jesus' name for his wife. And ask you, God, to be the healer in her life. Do that work. Lord, I don't know other needs. I pray for this sweet girl. Rest on her, Holy Spirit of God. Send favor. Lord, for people all over this room, my own son stands. I pray, God, for him. Lord, there are people all over this room standing, crying out unto you. I, I pray in Jesus' name that you'd come with favor. Meet every need in, in this place. I don't know what those needs are, but God, you do. I pray for this gentleman as he stands. Dear God, favor him today. Lord, we just take all of our need and we, we just cast it at your feet. Pray your will be done, not our will, but yours. Lord, some of these needs I know as I walk around, but some I don't. But God, it's important that you know, not that I know. God bless this lady today. Lord, I pray for this father I know the burden of his heart and ask you God to be the strength of his existence meet his need today Lord all over this room and people watching on television and people that are standing at their homes standing by a radio I pray that you'd come like a flood 
that you'd wash over us in grace and favor that you'd have your way we just cast our needs before you and thank you God that you are the sufficient one and we trust you if you're still in your seat I'm going to ask you now to stand with all the rest of these that are standing John's going to begin to sing a song maybe the call of God's in your life you may just come to this altar and kneel you may need to come join this church you may need to come trust Christ I don't know what your need is today but if God's calling you to respond I pray you respond somebody to be a part of the family somebody to trust Christ someone just to come and lay their burden down as we sing a couple of these stanzas this song this is God's call so you say well preacher I'll do it later no 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 friend you'll obey God when he tells you to come or you may not come obedience now now God calls us to obey now if God's calling in your heart you come and come now while John sings as God's calling you come Spirit of here we pray God your blessing your favor your touch meet their need today Lord give us grace to find your word and speak it out a rhema they'd come through us a church family is in just a moment when we leave this place and these continue to pray as long as they need you need help making a decision for Christ, go to one of those next step tables out there in the foyer. They're glad to talk with you. I'll be right here at this black table at the front. Glad to receive you uh, as you come today, linking your life uh, with Christ and with His church. Then you come and be a part. Just a quick word. Tonight at 6, we will have church here. It's a community-wide worship service led by our Baptist Association. All of our churches coming together and uh, Dr. Joseph Marshall from down at uh, St. John Divine Baptist Church will be our pastor preacher tonight. I'm going to be here. Looking forward to hearing him. He'll have a word from God. Uh, he and I text back and forth this morning. Tell him I was praying for him. He for us. And so he'll be preaching tonight. Six o'clock will be great music. And uh, John's leading out in part of that. And uh, so you come. Join us. Let's be good hosts to our other churches that will join us here uh, with our Bay Baptist Association and other churches. That will be a part. Again, go to one of those next step tables. Talk with somebody about your life, about your soul. Come right here. We'll be glad to visit with you.
Then don't miss next Sunday. Have a good time. We're going to celebrate Sean being 11 years old. And we'll have a good time together. And then next Sunday night at 5 o'clock, out in the back parking lot, we take the Lord's Supper in the car. And uh, you can get out if you want to, but don't be getting around a whole lot. So uh, we'll, we'll come together. And it'll be a great, great time. I'm praying we'll fill up that back parking lot and be running over into the ball fields, all right? So come join us. We'll have a great, great dynamic service uh, right at sunset next week. God love you, church. See you next time that we gather tonight at a place called Olive. Amen and amen. God really spoke today, and I'm sure that you are pondering on the words that pastor has brought from Ephesians chapter 6. You know, when the Spirit of God is at work, you and I cannot stand in His way. Uh, Julie, uh, you can feel the presence of God in this sanctuary today. Yes, Wouldn't you absolutely. agree with me? Yes, yes. Yeah, For real. I, yeah, I, I see there's a lot of people still going to the altar. And uh, it was very moving when Pastor asked you to stand up wherever you are and bring your, your burden to the Lord. Uh, I just want you to know that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you're not miles away. You're just one step away from King Jesus. And He's reaching out today to have you come and have fellowship with Him. And you and you with him and, and work that out whatever it may be Jesus is for you that's a great sermon about the full armor of God right Julie yes and it, um, you know he, he went off of what he did last week which right. you know anything good it bears repeating right so you know I'm, I'm glad that he kind of expounded upon this topic I'm really excited today that pastor really uh, spoke on stand firm in persistent prayer and many times if I ask you today, if I ask you, Julie, and I also remind myself, do you believe in prayer? I said, yes. But do you believe in persistent prayer? Uh, what, what can you talk with us about persistence uh, in our life of prayer? Well, you know, the Word of God is really clear about prayer and yeah. it's powerful. Amen. And, and you know, um, you know he, he's close to the brokenhearted. You know, the Word says that, you right. know, um, we, we just believing that what the word says is true helps us with our prayer life as well right. when we pray scripture back to god um you know just moving in that um that discipline and that lifestyle and the rhythm of prayer Absolutely. you know god cares deeply for us uh -huh. and and we're 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 in our, it helps with our, our relationship as well that's with true. him that's true I see some people lining up to talk to pastor. He's got his mask on and helping some people come to know Jesus Christ or some family joining the church. Uh, but let me remind you, the greatest posture you can have is a posture of prayer. And pastor did speak when you pick up your full armor of God, that's a militant position. And uh, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, our militant position is on our knees. Uh, we are fighting from a point of victory. But you'll also, uh, we're gonna talk for a few minutes today about 5G. And, uh, and I have Verizon right here. And uh, so it's, uh, I don't think it's 5G as yet, because it, but it's coming. Yes. But let's look at the first G. You're talking about God. Uh, Julie, you mentioned the high school, middle school, college students, uh, about for them to know God. Our assumption is that they know God, right? Well, and we shouldn't assume that. Because, right. You know, I was doing research uh, this, this week for some talks that I'm going to be giving. And one of the things that it says is about 2%. Mm of this gen this young generation has a biblical worldview wow and that's really mm. low and that's way lower than it used to be right so so they do they need to know who god is absolutely and in, in your schools or in, in on campus you are getting uh you know information from different sources i want to encourage you go to god's word the bible the holy bible and you'll understand who god is and how much he loves you then he talked about the second g the gospel the gospel is good news we have enough bad news around us yes, we do. and right and the good news is this that Jesus Christ is the son of God he came to die for us in our place because we are sinful people to bring us into a communion with a living God that's the gospel we call it the good news and it's sad that many of us don't understand the gospel uh, and how much Jesus loves you well and and what the gospel says is the problem with our world is sin right and that there's no other problem like Absolutely. that's that that covers everything Absolutely. and jesus is the solution to Ab that sin yeah and it's true that jesus brings us from dead to life that's what the gospel does and the third g is grace there's a lot of angry depressed anxious and the list goes on people all around us 
and he's reminding us that the third G is grace, that we need to be gracious, we need to be loving and caring. Wouldn't you agree, we're living in a culture right now, everyone is so mad. Yeah, well, and forgiveness is divine. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Every, everyone is just so mad and, and we need some grace. Another bucket of grace, uh, what's up coach? Another, that's coach Todd Leonard just went by. Another bucket of grace at your school, another bucket of grace to your neighbor will not really hurt. Then number four, number four G is goodness. Goodness. Now, he made a very important statement. He said, goodness is not the gospel, but the fruit of the gospel. You cannot replace the gospel with good works. Rather, good works is a fruit of the gospel. We need good pe more good people around. Yes, yes. Well, and, and I love that, you know, we're obeying Christ out of love, not right. out of like, you know, threat of, mm -hmm. of punishment, but that we're, that, in that goodness is, is how we're expressing our love to God. Right, absolutely. And then the last one, the fifth G is go. Just go and make a difference. I like, you know, the Great Commission, just go and be with people. Because you have been with Jesus, go now and be with people so that they could be with Jesus. And we believe in a great movement of God. Well, next week is pastor's 30th year celebration at Olive Baptist Church. <laughs> and I made a joke. I was 11 years old when he came to be the pastor here, John Tan and I. And uh, pastor is a good friend, dear friend, uh, just a, great to be around. And uh, so next week we'll celebrate. We're going to worship King Jesus and celebrate the pastor. But next week, Sunday, November 1st, 5 p.m., we're going to have the Lord's Supper. Check this out. We're going to have the Lord's Supper in a drive-in setting. Yes. So, Julie, you will drive in with your family, <laughs> okay? And as you enter the campus, you're going to get elements from the uh, deacons that's going to be around. And then you're going to go choose a good spot. In It's going to be the sunset, mm -hmm. right? It's going to be beautiful. And you're going to ch tune in. I think it's 91.7. Tune in the radio and lead your family into communion. What better way uh, to celebrate Pastor Trailer 30th year, sunset, and the Lord's Supper, right? Yeah. That's going to be a great time. That's going to be a great time. Yes. And what's more, it's going to be a little bit chilly. It's time change, by the way. Don't forget, we're going to have some baptisms now. I don't know whoever is going to get baptized. They are real repentance right yes. here. Yeah. Well, I think about 50 degree water, right? It's going to be great. And uh, Julia, as always, what's your one thought you're going to give out to our listeners today? Well, I think the best thing that um, Pastor said was to stand and pray. Yeah. You know, we just we have to pray. Absolutely. We need to be a people of prayer. Well, what better time? It's election yes. week. You know, there's so much going on. Yes. Uh, but more so, you pray because you have a prayer answering God. Well, Julie, we look forward to Wednesday. We'll talk about, let's not talk about it. Oh, let's Okay, not. let's not talk about it. Talk about anxiety. Anxiety and uh, Wednesday, and both we're campuses. We're so anxious. To see you there. <laughs> <laughs> we're really anxious to see you there. So, uh, dinner is at 4.30 and then at 6 o'clock. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you have any questions, text the word SAVIOR to 94,000. We are here to serve you. God bless you and have a great week.